What's up, everyone? Aaron Negler here with Chiefs Head TV, coming to you live with some extra cheese from the LIDEX studios, offices, everything, all about it. After the locker room was open a little bit ago, earlier today, this afternoon, heard from a bunch of players, David Bakhtiari singing the praises of J.K. Scott, talking about the offense, uh, Lucas Patrick telling stories about Aaron Rodgers saying hello to his mother, and Darnell Savage in a walking boot. Don't like to hear that. But uh, as I said yesterday, I do expect him to miss the Lions game. That is no inside information. That is just guesswork on my part. But really no surprise after uh, Sunday's injury. See him in a boot. Hopefully the time in it is short. Hello to everyone joining us in the comments. It'll be a short chat today since there's no other availability and no other real news to talk about till tomorrow. Um, we actually won't get our first injury report until Thursday. Um, the Packers are giving the guys a day off tomorrow, and obviously they have a game Monday, so the entire schedule gets pushed back. Oh, B E N T, th that's a really good question. Do we sign Bulaga after this season? Uh, remains to be seen. I still think probably not, but his level of play, it's hard to be completely dismissive of it, uh, the, of the idea. It's really going to be dependent on the numbers and what he's willing to play for, because I can't imagine that they can give him what he would be able to command on the open market, which is quite a bit of money. Uh, if he wants to stick around for his final deal in Green Bay, a little bit below market, as is usually the trend in Green Bay, um, I'm sure they would welcome him back uh, on not too long a deal. But I think there's a ways to go yet before they start talking about that. Daniel, thank you for the super chat. Thanks very much. <laughs> Aaron Spina. Aaron Jones is the greatest running back of all time. All right, slow down. Slow down. You're running for four touchdowns and everybody loses their mind. Everybody knows what that's from. Uh, Tremont is reliable. Brandon, I would agree. That's a nice, uh, nice luxury to have a veteran corner who can step in and give you quality minutes no matter what's going on in your secondary at any position. Not too shabby. Is it concerning Aaron Jones is only averaging 3.9 yards per carry? Uh, not to me, Jeezy, but you can be concerned about it if you wish. Uh, but no, I don't believe so. I think that number will go up as the year goes on. Um, but we'll see. Something to stay tuned about. Have we underrated the impact of Montrevious Adams has on the run defense? It seems dramatically different when he's in there. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I think more so than anything else on Sunday, what helped against the running game was the score. Getting up early, 17-0, um, certainly took Dallas out of a lot of what they wanted to do. They were clearly effective in the running game early on, uh, but then had to play catch-up. Uh, I think Montrevious helps. There's no doubt about it, but they – did give up a bunch of rushing yards even with him in there prior to his injury. So I'm not ready to say he's a big part of it, uh, but he certainly helps in that regard. No name. Thanks for the super chat. Lions, 15 days to prepare. Well, hey, that's the, that's the gig, right? You know, the Packers had 10 days to prepare for the uh, Cowboys as they were coming off a Sunday night game, and now they turn around. The Packers have an opponent who has had a lot of time to prepare. That's all part and parcel of the gig, but hey, Packers are at home. That should help. Oh, DeMartel Gilbert, thank you for the super chat. Did you like Aaron Rodgers' comments about not caring about stats anymore? I found it interesting. You know, he just wants to win now. Uh, I'm sure somewhere Mike McCarthy is going, oh, great. I'm sure Mike McCarthy is doing that a lot, actually, looking at the defense, looking at the punter. All of this now, great. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I do find it interesting that Aaron says that, but – keeps not handing the ball off on these RPOs at the one yard line and trying to throw it for a touchdown. Just give the ball to the back, man. Two weeks ago, Aaron Jones would have got in against the Eagles this past week, that third down that got bounced in the air. Just hand it to Carson. He probably walks in untouched. I don't know, but yes, I do believe he is playing a different brand of ball. I don't think that's, I don't think that's in question. I do think that he's playing a different style, but um, the proof is in the pudding. We'll see what happens down the stretch here. Should the Browns take interest in Mike McCarthy next year? They should have taken interest in Mike McCarthy last year. Man, Freddie Kitchens looks overmatched. I'll tell you that. How do you feel about Coward making a bigger? <sighs> Who cares about Colin Cowherd? I keep telling you guys, you come here and you ask me questions about Colin Cowherd. I, there's a few things on this earth 
I could care less about. Matt LaFleur's game plan against the Cowboys was superb. Cameron, I could not agree more. It was absolutely masterful. I'm excited to see what he cooks up this week. Name a team with a harder first five weeks schedule-wise. Now try it with a rookie head coach. We should be thrilled to be 4-1, and one, yes? I think so. I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm pumped. Uh, <laughs> no name. Thanks for the super chat. Aaron Jones, 25-plus TDs to Rogers, 10 TDs this year. I don't know about all that. Let's slow down here. Um, anyone hear the weird reporter in Rogers post game presser, Matt, that was hilarious. The guy seemingly caught in the 1920s. That was incredible. And, uh, I thought Rogers did a good job of responding to it because yeah, I mean, what can you say in that regard? Evan, thank you for the super chat. What's the deal with that question to Aaron? Uh, just someone trying to have a little bit of crazy fun, I guess. I mean, it's Dallas. It's all a show. The players literally walk through a nightclub to get to the football field. All bets are off when you're in Dallas, when you're in Jerry World. Nags, New Glarus is releasing two new beers this month. Laughing Fox and Belliner at full. You know you need to come home. I'll be coming home next week. I fly in Sunday, the day before the game, and I'll be in town for the Lions and Raiders game. So I'll, I'll check them out. Thoughts on our receiver production with Adams out? I'm glad you asked. Because a lot's being made about how there wasn't very much production. I'll, I'll only point out, when MVS is the number one guy in the progression and in the read, he gets open. He was open on that out pattern that Rodgers threw to him, which is his lone catch of the day. Uh, he was also opened twice deep where uh, Rodgers both overthrew him and then underthrew him. But then everybody wants to make a big deal about, oh, well, they didn't have any production. Yeah, because the game plan called for the ball to go to backs and tight ends. And look, they dominated using that game plan. Yes, Geronimo Allison had a bad drop. He also made some really nice blocks in the running game. Yes, uh, Jake Kumaro couldn't get in the end zone. He probably should have. But he did some really nice work down the field, both with and without the football. Just, I don't understand this desire to pummel and just get rid or go trade for somebody so these guys can't see the field Shepard probably has a touchdown if he's not interfered with. Let these guys play. The, when the game plan calls for a receiver-heavy attack and they don't deliver, then talk to me. But when the game plan calls for Corey Banky to walk behind me and say, you know, we're going to throw it a lot to the tight ends. We're going to throw it a lot to the running backs. We're going to utilize uh, our receiver action uh, in you know, some of the motion aspects, et cetera, to get – the defense to adjust to what we want, how we want them to, and take advantage of that. You know, I don't understand the complaints. Give them opportunities and then see if they deliver. Right now, they're doing what is called upon. Yes, occasionally they make a mistake. Sometimes they drop the football. If MVS was getting, you know, 12 targets and catching two, then I'd start worrying. But right now, they're winning football games, and their guys are being are doing what they're asked to do. It's hard for me to get worked up about it. Overshadow Sean, thank you for the super chat. Glad to see Ray Ray didn't find Corey yet. A lot of ball game left. <laughs> is Carson really solid, or was Dallas just bad? Dallas is a good defense, and they were in their home. They were in their house. Carson had a really good camp. I keep telling everybody. No one wants to listen to me. Carson had a really good camp. I'm not saying he's Barry Sanders 2.0 or anything, but he had a good camp. He's a solid back. Um, there's one uh, carry in particular that I'm going to put up on Twitter uh, when I get a chance later tonight. Uh, it was so well done as far as his vision, his stopping and starting, his patience in the hole. Um, yeah, I think he's he's a legit back. He's not going to you know threaten anybody for a starting job, but as far as your number two change of pace guy, he more than hold his own. Absolutely. Stanley, good question. Shift Amos to free safety since Savage is out. I'll bet that will be the call. Although, you know, that stuff is so fluid given how many different combinations Petten likes to use. Uh, we'll see what they do with Chandon Sullivan. Um, Josh Jackson could be in play, et cetera. But not as a free. But I do think Amos would be the free uh, for the time being if, indeed, Savage misses, his, misses time, which we still don't know if that's the case. Defense gave up a lot of big plays, so all they did. Uh, overly aggressive. 
Um, I'll say I've I said it a, a bunch of times, both the day of and after. Uh, the one to Tremont doesn't bug me because the quarterback got hit, changed the entire trajectory of the football. I don't think that's a touchdown if he's allowed to actually step into the throw. Um, the the Jair plays obviously that's a very teachable moment. Really, way too aggressive up front. And they took advantage of that with some out and up stuff. Uh, but hey. I'd rather they took those lumps in a game they ended up winning with a huge lead than, you know, game on the line, giving up a losing score. I'll take it. Uh, if it's cold Monday, it will be interesting to see how J.K. Scott punts in the weather. I agree, Evan. It was, gave him problems last year. No question about it. And it is a big part of the job description when you're in Green Bay. Got to deliver in the elements because there are a lot of them, as you guys know. Uh, Jair said they're going to take risks on plays. Yeah, of course. They're going to try and go for interceptions. They're going to try and bat balls, but you can't do it at the expense of a big play. You just can't do it. Got to be disciplined. Uh, let's see. Sorry, guys. Kick, kick coverage is lackluster. I think lackluster is being kind. Let's stop allowing Mason Crosby to lead special teams on tackles. No name. Thanks for the super chat. Will we ever see Tremont, Tremont Smith at corner? I doubt it from scrimmage. Now, he's there mostly for special teams, uh, but maybe. Who knows? Maybe he works his way into the mix as the year goes on. That's a possibility, but right now I think he's there strictly for teams. <laughs> Jandon Sullivan is climbing my favorite player ladder. There you go, Overshadow. What were your thoughts on Scoop Callahan's question to Rodgers? I talked about it a little bit before. Hey, man. Anything goes in Jerry World. People like to get crazy. Nothing surprises me down there. Thoughts on Josh Jackson last week. Bethany, I thought he played better uh, than he had earlier in the year. Um, he's actually a bit more physical than uh, I thought he would be coming into the season. I thought that's something he struggled with last year off and on. But um, I I'm still waiting to see him kind of matched up one-on-one, -on -one, uh, go break up, use his ball skills, etc., you haven't seen a whole lot of opportunities to do that. I'm interested to see if teams start testing him when he's out there. Uh, but so far, I thought he's, I think he's held his own really well. The more tape we give teams to scheme on us, the better we will be because of Lafleur will be able to trick them off of expectations and pass plays to open up the playbook. Yeah, there's some truth to that. No doubt about it. You don't want to overthink it. You don't want to outsmart yourself. But yeah, I do think um, you'll see. David Bakhtiari talked about it in the locker room today. Um, an evolution on the offensive side of the ball. And some of that is what you're talking about as far as upending expectations from a defensive coordinator. But some of it also is how the guys play together and the cohesiveness and uh, the play caller understanding where the strengths and weaknesses lie on his ball club. Uh, I think that will all evolve over time. And it's going to be exciting to watch it play out. Graham looked a lot better. It seemed like he was having fun. Yeah, I thought he played his ass off, actually. I think... I said after the game, I thought he blocked pretty well. And I tell you what, the tape certainly backs that up. That's probably the best game from a blocking standpoint he's had in Green Bay. Now, obviously, that's a pretty low bar. But uh, he was really getting after it on guys. And not just you know, little defensive backs. He was going after linebackers on the second level. You know, you love to see it. It certainly helps in the running game. It's no coincidence. You know, some of those longer runs that Jones busted, uh, especially one of the touchdown runs, um, you know, that's everybody blocking. Everybody. Every receiver the tight ends, et cetera. Um, it all plays a part. I love how many times Aaron Jones made Vander Esch look silly. He's no slouch. He's one of the better linebackers in the game. And Aaron Jones is the real deal. Hmm. What is the status of Zadarius Smith? We won't have anything official until Thursday, probably. They have the day off tomorrow. Um, I think the first injury report for a Monday night game will be out Thursday. But uh, until then, won't be anything official. I don't think there's anything really truly to worry about, but you never really know. Who wins the Super Bowl first, Shanahan or McVay? LaFleur. Mark at zero. What caused the difference between years for JK, the special teams coach or his own work? Probably more the latter than the former. Um, not to take anything away from Meninga, but um, I'm sure JK will tell you, you know, he put in a ton of work this offseason. Um, the work he's done in camp and throughout preseason and into the regular season, no doubt plays a part, but he did a lot of work in the off season and his swing is more natural. He's getting it off quicker and 
you know, the, the way he's done it consistently has been the most impressive thing because you certainly saw it at times last year, but now it seems uh, pretty much every swing is near flawless. I mean, he had one kind of off kilter punt on Sunday, but for the most part, he has been lights out. Do you believe Rogers claim that the direct snaps to Jones were accidental? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think Lucas confirmed that actually. Uh, Holden, thanks for the super chat. Time to start thinking of extending Bulaga. We talked about that right at the start of the stream, but um, I'm sure they'll think about it. It takes two to tango, though, and there's no way they sign him to a large extension uh, or a big time, you know, even market value extension. He's got to take a hometown discount if he wants to stick around Green Bay. Um, I, I just can't see them busting open the, the the wallet for a third contract for an oft injured guy, no matter how well he's playing, which obviously Bulaga is playing lights out, but. Um, We'll see how that develops as the year goes on. Still got to pay Kenny Clark. Blake Martinez is a possibility. Those are much younger, more ascending players. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what gets done. And it's not necessarily got to choose. You know, if you pay a blogger, you can't pay Martinez, although it could come down to that. But it's not necessarily the case. We'll see how they prioritize, prioritize and uh, utilize the cap the rest of the season. Direct snap to Vitaly, please. Thanks for the super chat. I agree. Especially down in the goal line. Give it to Vitaly. You got the big muscle man down there on the goal line. Give him the ball, please. All right, everybody. I'm going to have to jump. Thank you so much for all the questions. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to yours. It's a short chat today. I know lots going on here at LiveX. Lots going on in the world. Thank you so much for your support, for checking out the stream. And hey, hit subscribe, like, share with your friends. Tell them about She Said TV. Get them here on the YouTube channel. And if you like what we do, like to support what we do, please consider giving us $5 a month on our Patreon. It's just $5 a month. It supports everything that we do at Cheesehead TV, both here on the channel and on the website. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great night. Talk to you tomorrow.